And joining us right now is Brett Baer, anchor of Special Report on that same channel where he uh, he rounds out the day's business there at 6 p.m. Hey, Brett. Hey, good morning. That was a heck of an exchange, and uh, you must have been paying co- close attention to it, to it when it happened. And, uh, you know, with Josh Ernest and a lot of the spokespeople for the White House and the Pentagon, they had a rough week, I think, selling their plan. Well, yeah, in part because there were a number of different fits and starts about uh, messaging. I mean, they, they all weren't singing from the same sheet of music um, for, for a while. You know, I, Shepard uh, obviously was pressing Josh Ernest. Um, there, I, I don't know if I would have gone with every penny. <laughs> uh, I mean, with Shepard, that's a lot of pennies. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, but I, I agree that that I think it's going to be tough to to imagine that Arab uh, nations are going to have troops actually on the ground. It's uh, but they will contribute. I mean, we already know the Saudis are going to be training the Free Syrian Army uh, in Saudi. Uh, we we know UAE and others are going to help with airstrikes, we believe, but as far as boots on the ground, uh, it might be tough. Okay, you know, you are uniquely qualified to sort of talk about this because I, I keep coming back to the point that it's very unusual to hear the folks at the Pentagon talking in a different way than the folks at the White House are talking about when it, when this issue comes up. Uh, it, it's really surprising. Now, you, you worked at the Pentagon. You, I mean, you covered the Pentagon. You covered the White House. Sure. How remarkably unusual is that? And and uh, and what's going on behind the scenes that there seems to be this division about how you solve the problem of, of ISIS? Yeah. I mean, I spent almost six years at the at the Pentagon and, and almost four at the White House, and obviously they're different cultures. Uh, it is unique that um, that they are not at least met messaging the same. And I think that stems from some real angst inside the Pentagon about, um, you know, being shackled uh, before this thing even starts. And uh, so you're seeing some pushback both publicly from people who are current, um, you know, leaders in the military and former. I mean, the list is growing. It's significant. You obviously have the defense secretary, former defense secretary Robert Gates. You've had uh, former CENTCOM head Tony Zinni, uh, Anthony Zinni. Um, General Mattis, uh, others saying, listen, you can't take um, boots on the ground off the table uh, if you really want to destroy this group. Okay, but you know, let's go, let's just go a step further. You got you got that, but but you also have, I think, maybe some distrust over at the White House about the Pentagon. I mean, one hears that Barack Obama may actually be involved in this thing because he doesn't have a lot of trust that the Pentagon's going to do it the way he wants it done. He is requiring that that every target inside Syria be chosen from the Oval Office, and that's going to be tough. I mean, you can't. Um to micromanage out of the White House, um, it's going to be difficult to do. And uh, it's going to be frustrating I mean, for a lot of those uh, generals who are supposed to be in charge. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you you got targets of opportunity on the ground, right? And, yeah, and, and you have to go through a lawyer. You yeah, know, and you got to go through five levels of approval before you know whether you can pull the trigger or not. Yeah. Sure. And if you have the head of ISIS um, in your sights, I mean, are you pulling the trigger or are you waiting for... For some approval. I mean, it's it's going to be a tough way to fight, um, but we'll see. I, I think um, you're going to start seeing these this start to move in the next um, in the next few days. I don't think they're going to wait. In other words, for the Free Syrian Army to be completely trained, uh, as Shepard mentioned, that could take three months to a year, according to General Dempsey. Uh, Brett Baer, you and uh, your team at the uh, Fox News Bureau here in Washington, D.C., have been so good at following various angles of the Benghazi story over the past two years. And this week we saw the first day of the select committee headed by Chairman Trey Gowdy. Now, this was the day the Democrats wanted. They actually called for this hearing because they wanted to talk about the um, the ARB report, the Accountability Review Board report, and also what can be done to prevent the next Benghazi from happening, God forbid. And uh, there was actually a bit of a revelation, I thought. What did you think of the the fact that the one major urgent recommendation coming out of the ARB to prevent the next Benghazi attack uh, it hasn't actually been uh, instituted yet? Yeah, I, I think there were some revelations, uh, and the State Department Inspector General added to that, saying only ten out of twenty five of the the most difficult uh, facilities around the world to secure are secure, and um, I think. 
you know, this was a bipartisan start to this hearing. I don't know that it'll be that way um, as you go deeper into some of these questions <laughs> that the Benghazi Select Committee will, will delve into. But uh, right now, it uh, it seems like they were all on the same sheet of music. I, I, I just was watching last night, watching your show. And it was sort of fun to see Mort Kondracki and Fred Barnes and yeah. Marl Lyson showing up again. I haven't seen them in forever. Throwback Thursday. Yeah. And I, like I tried it. not to make that offensive, you know. I mean, I, uh, but Fred and Mort, that was great to see the Beltway Boys back. The Beltway Boys, yeah. Uh, you know, really quickly, Brett, just swinging back to Benghazi, because I just realized we haven't been able to touch base with you since Cheryl Atkinson's report from earlier this week about what sounds like Hillary's plumbers there scrubbing documents in the bottom of Foggy Bottom. Uh, had you heard this report before? Uh, I, uh, some people in Washington said, oh, yeah, that was sort of bubbling around out there. What do you make of it? Yeah, I mean, it had been. It hadn't been, um, you know, there had been whispers about it, but there hasn't there hadn't been anybody on the record. And obviously, Mr. Maxwell talked to uh, Cheryl Atkinson. So I think that's going to be something that they're going to pursue, and that's a, a big deal, obviously. If it's accurate, um, it'll be the, the moment that the people who have been saying something was dirty about the entire process of the ARB um, – We'll see that. Uh, I, I think we're a long way from there. It's still an allegation, uh, but you know it is a uh, blockbuster. Well, if, if indeed it's true that the chief of staff for Hillary Clinton was in the room monitoring a, a, a document scrubbing operation, that's a hell of a bombshell. Big bombshell. It'll change the entire dynamic. Yeah. So we'll see. Uh, clearly, Gowdy is going to going to look into that. All right. Good deal. Listen. Uh, thank you so much, Brett. Always a pleasure. All right, we'll see you guys.